So that's a very important codex, a very important part of the stream. So I will start here with the MGPEG. So MGPEG, it, it, it was uh, created in the mid 90s. It's a very old one. And, uh, and basically it's a motion JPEG. So we are talking about uh, a group of pictures compressed and sent to the NVR or to the client. So, but, and, and there's no, um, there's no uh, any 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 processing or any um, algorithm that it's working to decrease the size of these pictures or to try to uh, minimize the bit height used by the camera. It's basically using uh, a sequence of pictures and compressing in the FPS that you selected and sending to the camera. So. Here's an example of a ball movement moving. So in each picture, it will get the full frame in the resolution that you selected and it will send to the NVR. So <clears throat> pros and cons. So pros is it's high quality. So we have a, a very high quality because in each frame, we have all the information that we, we have in the scene in the highest resolution possible, right? And another one here, less processing power. So basically we have a very low processing power on this type of codec because it's not using any algorithm or any um, technology to try to reduce it. It's just basically grouping and sending to the NVR. So the cons is high bit hate. So if you're not compressing, we are sending the full frame, so it's it's very costly to the network. So it's very uh, uh, you need to size your network very well to not have bottlenecks and start to have uh, packet loss or overload. And we need storage. A lot, because the highest is the bit height, the highest is the storage that you need to record this stream. Okay. So, so that's the MGPEG. So let's talk about now the H264. Also known as AVC, Advanced Video Coding. So H264 is a standard created by the International Telecommunication Union. Um, and, and basically the summary of its uh, principle is the camera getting the scene. It will have a component here that is the prediction. The second one is the transformation. And the last one is encode. Okay. And after that, it will send to the NVR and client. So uh, let's start to, to see an example here of uh, this scene. So we have uh, here a background and we have a ball uh, passing through the scene. So initially, the first one here we'll call as the iframe. intracoded frame. So this frame will actually be the complete frame, just like the MGPEG, the complete frame with all the content, all the, the image as it is, without any calculation and anything. So this means that we have a low processing power, but we will have a high bit height, right, for this iframe. But after that, the, the camera will start to compare the iframe with the next frame, which is called projection frame with the P, P frame. So it will start to compare the, the image and see, okay, the background is the same, it's static. So 
it will not send this data to the NVR to the client. Only the difference, so only the ball in this case will be sent as a P frame. So this actually will reduce a lot the, the data that we will transfer to the NVR and client. And this will increase the processing power needed and decrease the bit height. And this will be the same for all the P frames that we have uh, after that. So it will capture only the, the, the moving parts or the parts that are really different from the uh, last iframe sent to the camera. Okay, so basically that's, uh, that's how it works initially in, in, this, uh, in, in this situation that we have an object moving or uh, different information being uh, sent uh, comparing to the iframe. So what's happening? In, after a specific time, the camera will send a new iframe with the same, the same as the first one here, you know, with all the information, background, etc. And this will refresh everything because here we are just sending the extra uh, parts that we are seeing as a movement or that, that is different from this iframe. And this will update the stream to be uh, the new uh, uh, frame to be compared to the next P frame. So this is like a cycle. So, and what determines this, uh, the number of P frames in I frame is something called G O V or G O P group of video or group of pictures is the same. So this is a, uh, is a setting that you can set in the cameras that will define how many frames I want to send considering the iframe and the preframes. So in this example, we are setting um, a GOV or GOP as four, right? One iframe and three frames. And then it will start again with the next iframe. I will send more three P frames and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so this is uh, how it looks like. So what happens if we set this value too high? Depending on the on the type of the scene, if it's like a busy scene, a complex scene, too many movements and etc., you can start to have a deterioration after a few, um, a few seconds, or depending on the number of the the period that you are setting here. Uh, because we're basically sending the differences and it's predicting the, how the image will look like with these new uh, values. But only the iframe will give the real image as it is uh, live. So if you set this uh, high value, it will really decrease the bit height, but it can uh, be impacted in the image quality. But if it's like a too low, it will be basically the MGPEG. With loss of iframe with a lot of content and a lot of data to be transmitted okay and i will not go too deep in the in, on how it works but basically we have something called master blocks which in for h264 uh, we have up to 16 by 16 uh, pixels okay it can be subdivided so le let's for example um, let's think this is like a 16 by 16 we can have inside of this 16 by 16 like a 4 by 4 uh, you know and other proportions as well and what this master blocks do is identifies similar uh, pixels around it and it will uh, send information as just one pixel. So this decreases a lot the content that we, need, we, we send to the NVR or to the client, okay? So the pros and, and cons uh, for H264, uh, basically we have less, less bit height and cons we have more processing power that we are using. 
and with less bit height, we have less storage needed. We also have uh, a new component here in the H.264 stream, which is audio. In the MG pack, we don't have audio enabled or embedded in the, in the codec, but in the H.264, we, we have the audio as well. It's an option that we can enable in the camera and it can be merged in the video uh, stream to the NVR. Okay, so let's jump to H265, also known as HEVC, which is high efficiency video coding, which is basically the same we we know uh, as the same uh, codec. So the major difference, so H.265, it's an innovation, it's a new generation of this H.264. We have several different uh, enhancements, but the major one is that we don't use master blockers uh, anymore. We use CTUs that we can have blocks 64 by 64 pixels. So this means that we can compress more information uh, in just one pixel and send to the, to the NVR or to the client. Okay, so let, let's assume that we have in the scene uh, a part of the sky, so it's all blue. In the H.264, we can just group 16 by 16, uh, the same pixels, then we can send the information to the NVR. But in the H.265, we can group more uh, pixels and send the information like blue. So we do group similar information as the same pixel. So, so this will reduce a lot the, the bit height and a lot of the storage needed uh, in the NVR. So pros, less bit height comparing to the H.264, less storage. And of course, we have more uh, more work going on on the camera side. So we will have more processing power. Processing power. And another thing related to the H.265 is that it's still not implemented as H.264 in all devices, in all uh, services. So for example, like uh, streaming services, web browsers to render this video, to decode this video, is not implemented in, in all locations yet, like we have with H.264. So depending on, on the version, depending on the type of equipment that you are using, so for example, if you have an NVR that you are doing a, a remote monitoring in a web browser, uh, normally this web browser will require a plugin if the camera, if the channel is using an H.265. But this has been implemented as we speak and we have uh, newer generations of browsers and, and all the uh, other programs. So this will probably be incorporated as we have the H.264, but it still is not widely used. So uh, I'll put widely used. So we'll just put this as a red flag, not red flag, as a yellow flag, just to remind that uh, if your customer has a specific need of, you know, to monitoring this, uh, this camera or this channel without a proper software to decode the H.265, you need to pay attention if uh, it will be able to do that via a browser, for example. Okay, so this concludes our product part.